And welcome to Russ Chandler Stadium, McNeese Ballpark here in Atlanta, Georgia. It is game number four of the first round of the 2023 Southwestern Athletic Conference Tournament live on the campus of Georgia Tech University. Both teams ready to go as the Grambling State University Tigers, the number one seed out of the Western Division will get ready to take on their nemesis, Jackson State University out of the East, who comes in as a number four seed, but you can't count out head coach Omar Johnson and the Jackson State University Tigers, the G against the J. Coming up next right here on the Swag Digital Network and joining us here now is head coach Roger Kador. As the sun is beginning to set, we see the lights on. We've been talking about when the, sky, when the skies fall dark and the, see the skyline of Midtown here in Atlanta. We can't wait to see that, but uh, I think what we can't wait to see is some great baseball. And no matter what the seedings are for these two teams, you can't count anybody out. No, you can't. And uh, you got a guy like Omar Johnson, who is one of the good coaches in the league, and uh, and the fiery uh, general. You got to watch him because he's looking for any edge he could get. Last time that these two teams met was back in May of 2022. They did not play this year. as uh, you, you really don't see that too often because the two teams are so close in proximity. Alcorn, Jackson, Grambling all really close. First pitch of the ballgame a little bit high for Lorenzo Patterson, who's starting off pitching for the Grambling Tigers. And we have one ball and no strikes. Beautiful evening here for baseball here in Midtown Atlanta. Strike yes, two. it is. Uh, you couldn't order better day than it is. Jatavis Melton, the senior, up to the plate, hitting 319, played and started 51 ball games. He, he is uh, started and played in the most games of anybody else in the lineup. Yep. I would love to be a fly on the wall to know what Prairie View coach is talking to his players about. He's holding them over there. He's holding Coda off a long time. Man, he's been over there for a minute. They have a church for real. Yeah. Well, what is – he's going to have some kids come out flat tomorrow. I can <laughs> – you know. Davis Melton with a shot and foul. Remains one and two. You know, after a, a loss like that <laughs> that you had against Alabama State where you lose 11-1, to one, one of two things can happen. It, it, the, either it can motivate you or it can really deflate you. Right. And you just, you know, you basically give up. And the fact is they were going to not beat Alabama State anyway. To be honest with you, the law of average said, average said Alabama State was the better team. You got me? So – uh, I've been in that situation where I played teams were better than us, and I pretty much accepted the fact that they were better. I mean, you can't do anything about it. Right. You know? I think the major thing that he may be looking at is just, you know, how they played, how they finished, you know, mistakes that they made in the field, all those types of things. And that's going to be strike three. Good pitch on the inside corner. And now Daniel, Brown, Daniel Bannon will come up to the plate. The junior is hitting 365 on the year. 200 at-bats, more than anybody else in the lineup coming into the tournament. He scored 48 runs. And, of course, has no home runs with 32 RBI. I saw him play second base early in the year. I sort of liked him as a second baseman. He shot right to the second baseman for Grambling, and that is uh, Kyle Walker. And, he throws out Bannon. And now Ty Hill coming to the plate with two down. You know, you look at uh, Jackson State, what they have been able to do this year, not the type of year that you would see from head coach Omar Johnson, but you to be honest, the East is extremely strong this year. Yeah, it's very strong, and he had some injuries. Yep. And uh, so, and he really, just before the middle of the season, they were playing really bad, bad baseball. And he was able to rally them around and finish relatively strong. And uh, they're in a good situation where, you know, you know, we got to watch this umpire here if he's going to have a tight zone uh, in the fourth game. So we got to, you know. 
That one is a strike. I guess it's going to be tight. Yeah, beginning of the season, you were talking about it. They uh, lost to Southern in a close game, 4-5. to five. This was in the uh, Astros Cactus Jack mm -hmm. HBCU Classic. They beat Valley 14-1-7, to one and seven, beat Prairie View, uh, and then they uh, ended up, if I'm not mistaken, they lost to Southeastern or after that, 19 mm -hmm. nothing. But they, they had some pretty good wins. Won all three games in the Andre Dawson Classic. Mm -hmm. really, yes, yeah, they really played well against Arkansas Pond Bluff. But just really, like you said, midseason is when they started falling off a little bit and uh, lost two out of three to Alabama A&M, then lost all three to Alabama State, lost one to Valley. Back half of the season, they were able to uh, get two out of three against Valley, and this one's going up in the air. It is playable. Coming under it is Jose Vargas, and he makes the catch to retire Jackson State's. So no runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on base for Jackson State. Grambling coming up to bat for the first time this evening. We'll be right back. Back here at Russ Chandler Stadium here in Atlanta, Georgia, where the Grambling Tigers and Jackson State University Tigers battling in the final game of the first day of the tournament. And all the first three days, always long. And uh, let's take a look at the lineup for the Grambling Tigers. Uh, Tiger Barn will start things off. Kyle Walker, Trevor Hatton, Keelan Mack, Cameron Buford, who's been a mainstay on this team, Kenu Jacobs Gouchard. Uh, Jose Vargas, Chris Marcellus, Ty, Terry Burrell III, and Lorenzo Patterson on the mound. Outside on the first pitch. Borm hitting 285 on the year, playing in 42 games, starting in 41. Tiger born from Jonesboro. He transferred in. Ooh. Got in there for a strike. You know, I saw an interesting article. We were talking with, we were, we were talking earlier about the game and people growing and what have you and not being able to challenge folks as Boren will take a walk. Mm -hmm. we, we are also seeing something that's also somewhat alarming, and that is more people who are umpiring baseball games, especially at the Little League, they're just, they say, hey, we don't want to deal with the parents anymore. Yeah. And they're walking away from it. Yeah, people attacking umpires and everything. I mean, just crazy. And the parents are saying things. Outside. Yeah, I think that's, you know, there's so many different, um, there's so many different layers to how the game can improve at the younger level mm -hmm. so they can get to you know, the high school and this level. You know, I think you brought up a good point. Travel ball for the normal family is so expensive. <laughs> Centuria, it's odd. This is why MLB is making such an effort to help kids not have to pay to be a part. Now, they can't do it for every kid. Yeah. You know, it's an impossible expense. But the, the high-level kids are being encouraged 
to come with them, you know? Yeah, and, I, I, you know, I think that so, things like that will really help young folks. You know, Coach Ellis said that the reason why he holds that free clinic in Omaha every year is to encourage young kids to come out. Yeah, encourage them. Yeah. And you got to do free things to encourage them. Matter of fact, he owns a clinic. Usually it's on the east end of Ruston every year. Okay. And uh, gets a lot of kids out there. Yeah. They were filed off. I think that's what you have to do is, is you got to go where the people are and where the kids are to see, you know, if they can gain an interest in the sport. And listen, we didn't lose those kids overnight. You're not getting them back overnight. Right. It's going to take years. Oh, he called Carl him out. at first. <laughs> well, they're going to have a conference about Let's this. Let's see. Ooh. 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 That's close. Let's see. Oh, I think he was safe. Let's that's see. A, that's good camera work. There's a the finger right there. It looks like from that, that angle that right there, it looks like the finger's on the bag before the glove hits the yeah. shoulder. That's a heck of a pickoff move by the pitcher, though. Yeah, he got him leaning right there. Good job, Chris, y'all. Yeah, that is great camera work, and it looked like that his arm had touched the or his hand. Well, this the Tim what they where they gonna call the touch at? If it's you know, is it there? No, there. Is it gonna be called there? They'll call him out. This is what I was looking at. Yeah, there. I know, I know. I saw the hit. Yeah. You need a clicker <laughs> to draw the screen. Yeah. And it's got to be is there enough evidence to overturn. Right. That's the other thing, too, is that it has to be enough evidence to overturn a call, in which just from that angle, I don't know if there is yet. Yeah. But we'll, we'll see here in just a minute. But from the looks of it, it looks like he could have been safe. Yeah. Oh, that is going to be close. Well, the producer said he's out. The last one he called safe was safe. He calling this one out. I'll, I'll put my money on him then. Let's see. And he's out. And he's out. The producer yep. said it. He's two for two today. He's The producer is in charge. They've lost now. They don't have a challenge, right? Did, was that their challenge or the officials? Gremlin. Well, if they if Gremlin challenged it, then, yeah, they lost that. But now if the officials were the ones yeah, that. Yeah, they wouldn't lose it. No. Yeah. Well, we don't want no more challenges. It delays the game. So caught stealing. And Kyle Walker still up to bat. The shot up in the air in foul territory, and it will travel out. Watch out, Prairie View. And Church has dismissed for Ooh, today. Oh, Church is over with. They have four members still in there. <laughs> they must be discussing how many. <laughs> what was the Sunday school attendance? And <laughs> what class had the best offering? <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to get oh, the banner for attendance? Oh, my goodness. This is good <laughs> stuff. But people provide this for us. Yeah. We wouldn't be talking about it if he, he had gone home with, with – you got me? Yeah. He provided this, this opportunity. Don't do that, man. Well – Looks like that uh, Trevor Hatton is up to bat now for the Grambling Tigers. Hatton fouls this one off. Trevor Hatton, a sophomore. Pretty tough to ask someone to carry 500 pounds on their back when they're only ca capable of carrying 50. And just not going to work. Hatton is a mass communication major. Oh, okay. He pops it straight up in the air. This one's going to be playable in foul territory. Oh, that could have been disastrous. They didn't make contact. Just light. This one was fouled up in the air between the catcher and the first baseman. This was nearly a disaster right there. Oh. 
So nearly got stepped on. Then, of course, hit by the ball. So uh, somebody got to speak up over there for that ball. Yeah. Hadden back at the plate. He is now staring down an 0-2 count, and he strikes out. And Hatton goes down swinging, and Jackson State, no runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. If you're Jackson State, you got to feel good about the first inning, putting away the SWAT Western Division's champs in inning number one. We'll take this time out. No score from here at the ballpark. Jackson State coming to the plate here in the second inning. Mersman, White, and Atterbury up to the plate for Jackson State. Boy, I tell you what, playing deep in the hole for the Crambling Tigers was Kyle, Wal uh, Kyle Walker, and I mean, he had to go nearly the right field. He did a good job. Miles White now coming to the plate for Jackson State. And for White, Miles hitting 322, 329 on the season. He started in 38 games, 140 at-bats, 34 runs. Doesn't have any home runs with 23 RBI. Looked like he could run. And this one, a straight shot. Nearly fumbled by the third baseman from Grambling. And that gives you two away. Now Atterbury coming to the plate now for Jackson State University. Atterbury, the designated hitter, hitting 322. Ooh, that's going to be a big swing for a strike. Bad in there for a strike. Nice and easy. This one swung on, hit foul. Crowd thickening up a little bit here as uh, some of the Jackson and Grambling faithful coming to Atlanta. Yeah. Not a good swing, but he bought, fought it off with two strikes. Atterbury trying to get something started for Jackson State with two outs. And this is a base hit. See, this is what happened when you five pitches off, you get a better pitch to hit. And we all know Jackson, one of those teams that can get hot. And this one just right off the bat. 
simple swing, getting it into right center. Marshall Louise now coming to the plate, the catcher for Jackson State. And for Louise, he's hitting 268 on the year, the senior hitting in, or I should say starting in 50 and playing in 50 games. 153 at bats, 37 runs, 41 hits, five doubles. And here's a shot deep in the hole once again, and nice toss. Good play. And retiring the side is Kyle Walker. So for the Jackson State University Tigers, no runs off of one hit, no errors, and one man left on base. We now go to the bottom of the second inning. No score between Jackson and Grambling. Back after this. Keep your eyes on the horizon 100% of the time. You are a success story in the making. You are ready to take on the world. You are ready for this. You will get there from here. And you can't wait to get started. And as proud supporters of HBCUs around the country, we can't wait to see how far you go. Back here at Russ Chandler Stadium here in Atlanta, Georgia. Keelan Mack now coming to the plate for the Grambling Tigers to start things off here in the bottom of the second inning. Mack has hit a few home runs this year. As a matter of fact, he has. Keelan 13. Mack hitting in the four hole is at 13 home runs, 53 RBI. Trevor Hatton actually leads the team in RBI with 71. That pitch just missing for a ball. Baseball, one of those games about patience and discipline. It is. Fouled off, and it's another strike. 18 to 22-year-olds, when you get new freshmen in, Coach, what do you tell them about? Because, you know, of course they may have played high school ball or AAU or whatever the case is, and here's a shot into center field. And going back on it is Melton, and he makes the catch. Well, I try to tell them it's a little different than high school. You're going to fail a little more. Balls that got went through for hits in high school going to be caught here. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be disappointed a little more. But if you work hard and stay with it, you can survive it. That first pitch in there. And you can't catch the first bus going home. <laughs> Still, mama, mama, <laughs> they throwing the yellow hammer, mama. <laughs> you can't catch that first bus. You know, and mamas, y'all tell them they can't come home. You say you stay there and be like a man, fight it out. They're like a golf shot in the right field. And caught for the second out of the inning. Now Guishard coming up to the plate for the Grambling Tigers. Now we know this is a Louisiana name. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bad pitch missing for a ball. And we talk about uh, all of the great uh, food and 
you know, the great players that have come to Louisiana. And well, it was a chef that came to my came to my mind that I used to watch when I was a kid growing up. Two, actually. You may know both of them. One was John Fultz. John Fultz and Justin Wilson. And Justin Wilson. Those are the two that I saw on PBS when I was a kid. Yes. And uh, all remember that I said, man, they talk kind of funny. He really Wisconsin. funny, Justin Wilson. <laughs> oh, he was hilarious. Oh, hilarious. Strikeout one, two, three for the Grambling State University Tigers. And that retires the side. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. We go to the top of the third. No score between Grambling and Jackson. Back here at the ballpark, McNeese Ballpark, here in Atlanta, Georgia, on the campus of Georgia Tech University. Grambling and Jackson, no score. Two teams very familiar with each other. And if the score continues to be low, that favors Jackson. Yes. <laughs> yes, it does. First pitch in there for a strike. We said the last time these two teams played, May 3rd of 2022. And it was a marathon in, and here's a roper right into center field and getting aboard to start things off in this half of an inning is Gomez. Saavedra now coming up to the plate for Jackson State. And for Saavedra, he is hitting 326 on the year. He's played and started, played in 34 games, started in 24. Remember the last time that these two teams played, Jackson won the game 20 to 12. Ooh. In that ball game, Jackson scored 20 runs off of 16 hits. Grambling had 12 runs off of 13 hits and three errors. Really the scoring for Jackson after Graham, they tied the game at three after the end of the first inning. Grambling scored, Jackson scored four, but it was a nine-run ninth inning that was really the determining factor. <laughs> Grambling was actually trailing going into the ninth inning, but J Jackson put up nine runs in the ninth inning. Now, that was in Madison? That was in, no, that was in Maine. That was Birmingham. in uh, Jackson. No, well, it was at Grambling, as a matter of fact. Oh, it was at Grambling, field. okay. Mm -hmm. A lot could happen at Grambling with that short left field porch. Oh, I'm trying to <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The fence is funny in left field. Huh? The fence is a little funny in left field. Yeah, it's a little funny. <laughs> Isn't it amazing how we try to speed the game up? Yeah. And then we put somebody on first. And speed slows the game up. Speed slows it down. That's kind of an oxymoron. Yeah. Isn't that something? That's crazy. Everybody wants to put more speed in the game. But in reality, it slows the game up. Five, four, not in time at first. But they get the force at second. Yeah. 
Yeah, people don't know that, but speed slows it up. So one aboard now for Jackson State. Jatavis Melton coming on the onto the uh, plate for Jackson State. Swung on and missed. Well, he was chasing that one. Defensively for the uh, Grambling Tigers. Keelan Mack, Trevor Hatton, Cam Buford, Kyle Walker, all first team all conference or state all conference honors. Swung on and missed. <laughs> Swung on and missed for a strike. Pitchers were right there. Daniel Bannon, the left fielder, now coming to the plate for Jackson State. Ooh. They didn't have any, any first-teamers, but they did have a second-teamer, and that's relief pitcher Eric Gonzalez. And that's Jackson State? Jackson State only had one second-team all-conference player. Mm -hmm. Nobody on the first team, which is usually unusual, but they, they've had it down here. And uh, also, they did have uh, uh, third baseman Ty Hill also on the second-team all-conference team. Two for Jackson, and I think three, four for Grambling. Okay. Jackson State, of course, no stranger to the SWAC championship, getting into the championship game. Here's a shot. The shortstop throw is over Ooh. and in time. Yeah. So for Jackson State, no runs, no hits, no errors, and one person left. We now go to the bottom of the third inning. No score between Jackson and Grambling. Back after this. Back here in Atlanta, Georgia, it is game four of the 2023 SWAC Baseball Tournament. Day one of the tournament here in Atlanta. And so far we've seen some interesting baseball. FAMU and Texas Southern was uh, nine to two as the final there. Alabama State run rule Prairie View a and that game just happened. The closest game that we've had so far was Bethune and Southern, and Southern had to come from behind. They won that game four to two to advance to tomorrow's game that will be played against the winner of this game here. So it could be Southern Grambling or Southern Jackson. Either way, those are two teams that know each other very well. Oh, yeah, either way, it's going to be a battle. Uh, if it's Southern Jackson, it'll be in the legendary form that so many years we played for championships. You know, it was either Jackson or, or Southern. Yep. So we got to walk to start things out for Jose Vargas 
And Marcellus now will come to the plate for the first time today. This one's popped up, and no one's going to get it. Those are those are uh, little bloopers that you do not want to hit because if you catch them in foul territory, it's like a waste of their bat. Yeah, it is. It certainly is. Looked like he was going for a bunt here momentarily, and yeah. instead he just popped it straight up in the air. Well, great hustle trying to chase it down. Marcellus behind the counter on one, and here's the throw over to first. Not in time. Well, after today's game and watching Southern, they are a team that is a little hot right now. Yeah, they played well today. You know, and they kept the mistakes down. And Nick Wilson pitched well as usual. And they got some hits late that they really did it for them. A couple of them were with two outs, so got to give them some credit. There's no question about that. And so now one of these two teams will play Southern tomorrow at 6 p.m. The loser plays Bethune-Cookman at 12 noon. Bad pitch just missing for a ball. Here's a pitch. Strike. Mm. Struck him out. I mean, I can't understand why these kids continue to take their strikes. You know, you got to swing the bat to give your team a chance. Terry Burrell the third up to the uh, plate. And now if you are grambling, you know, one of the things that you got to do is just, again, you want to start trying to find some offense. You got one man aboard here with, and here is a shot in the right field. This may drop, and it does right in the hand of the right fielder, and that retires. Nope, it's going to be two outs. He did everything right on that fly ball. He turned, opened up because the ball hit from a right-hand batter. It's going to be slicing to the line. So he had good view of where the ball was going. So he did mechanically or fundamentally, he did everything right. Here is a pitch getting to that outside corner. Tiger Borum on to hit for the Grambling Tigers. Just missing for a ball. Things will start at 9 a.m. tomorrow. That pitch missing for a ball. Texas Southern and Prairie View will start at 9 a.m. The loser of this game will play against Bethune-Cookman at noon. And then the two winners bracket games. That will be FAMU and Alabama State tomorrow at 3 p.m. And then the winner of this game will play against Southern tomorrow at 6 p.m. Are you coming at the 9? I'm trying to try to. <laughs> oh, you no, know, you have the 9 o'clock game? I have the, no, I have the, 12, the oh, 3 and the 6. Oh, okay. It depends on if my body allows me to wake up early in the morning. No, <laughs> no I was just messing with you. I know Charles is coming. Uh, but I have to be here. Yep. Day two tomorrow, of course, four more games tomorrow and on Friday. Two games if necessary that on one is Sunday. Gonna that stay one's going to go deep, far and away. <laughs> Tiger Borum, not with a boring shot at all, going over <laughs> the right center field fence. 
And it's now two to nothing. Make it three to nothing. I'm sorry, Grambling on top. It's two. Two to nothing. Two, yeah. And look at that shot in the right center field, Coach. He hit right. that one really good. He dropped it bad, bad head on it. And again, I knew it wasn't going to stay in. Bats are alive for the Grambling Tigers. And now for Jackson State University. They're going to try to slow things down. And not this time, a base hit. Kyle Walker, who was an all-conference recipient, gets a base hit into center field. This might be something that can spark Gramlin right here. Trevor Hatton now coming to the plate. That one to the outside for a ball. Fans having fun with some of the folks here that's at the what is, That's about the SWAC athletic sports. Yeah. You get a lot of joy and back and forth talking. And it's sometimes family members who one went to one oh, school man. and the other one goes to another one. Here's a shot into left field for a base hit. So now Grambling with a couple of hits. With two outs here in the third inning. Keelan Mack, the designated here, coming up. He flew out to the center fielder the last time up. Now he can earn his stripe with the, if he's a home run hitter, this is when you want to hit one. This oh. one straight up in the air. And finally catching the ball was the second baseman, Miles White. He, he tried to hit a home run. He dipped his shoulders. So one run off of two hits, one hit, two hits. No errors, two men left. We go now to the fourth inning with the score one to nothing, Grambling. We'll be right back.
Ty Hill at the plate now for Jackson State. He's down 0-2. Bramley up two to nothing. Here's a shot right to Vargas. Good job. And he gets him out. You see this again on the replay. Yeah. And he had to, in his mind, had to hurry, so he did. But he got gave the first baseman the ball in the right place. You know, I've really been impressed with the level play that I've seen, particularly the defensive side in the pitching. It's really been quality, you know? Absolutely. And, you know, we were talking about that, how important it is. It's not just about playing, but it's about quality baseball. Yeah. And I think Tony was saying this earlier. It's clean. Clean. It's clean, man. This is why the games has been going so smoothly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If it was raggedy, you will have four-hour games, Ooh. literally. Jesus. Well, but the games have been very, very clean. I saw the same thing last, a couple of weeks ago at the uh, the, the HBCU uh, Small College World Series. The games were clean. They played clean baseball. Mm -hmm. And they did have made a lot of good plays. So the quality of play, and you know what? They have got decent coaching who is coaching these kids. Because you got to have coaching. Oh, yeah, you have to. You know. And schools are now trying to make an investment to help them get assistant coaches, you know. Yeah, baseball is, is no longer one of those forgotten sports anymore. You got to be able to compete. Yes. And now taking a walk is Mersman. And now Miles White coming up to the plate. The, long, uh, the longest probably day that I've had at the tournament. It was in Baton Rouge. It was a monsoon. And you had to call the people in from Pafford that came in and they with the helicopter and tried to get all of that water off the field and ended up using another ballpark that yeah. night just to get caught up. Yeah, that's when Texas four, oh four. Mm -hmm. That's when Texas Southern won the tournament. Yep. Yeah. That went in there for a strike. Great stuff by Lorenzo, Lorenzo Patterson. Patterson. Need to throw, keeps getting ahead here. He's got two runs. Need to put the pressure on Jackson. Make and him swing the bat. Off. Almost a, a laser shot near the Grambling dugout. I was thinking that netting was in front of the players, but it's behind them. So just missing to the outside for a ball. Here's a pitch. Down the third baseline, B fair ball. Coming around second is Mersman. And getting the stand-up double is Miles White. That's a good piece of hitting. See, now, Gramlin got two runs. You got to come in and close it out. Don't give up what you just got. Now, Atterbury on to hit for the Jackson State Tigers. You see that again on replay. Opposite direction hit, really. Yeah. Here's a pitch. And therefore, strike. Pitch. He was trying to get to the inside of the plate, mm -hmm. just missing. You 
got too many things could go wrong if you try to pitch inside. Oh, yeah. You can hit the runner, the hitter, or you can leave it over the plate and he hurt you. That pitch. No, that this pitch. is a come on. No. The, Just see, the, missing on that one. Yeah, that's a good pitch right there. Pitcher got to have that when he wants it. Two and one the count in there for a strike. Now two and two the count. So Atterbury, two and two, it's five, it's uh, three, two to nothing rather, grambling on top. Here's the pitch. That one misses for a ball. And some of the uh, Grambling faithful not too terribly happy about that. Well, that one was a ball. Coach Davin Pierre doesn't look like he's too worried about it right now. Here's the pitch. There it is. And he walked him. Jackson fans jubilated. And the Grambling fans not happy. I, I didn't like that that umpire. I don't like umpires who don't call strikes. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty tough on them who don't call strikes. Now a, a mound visit. Umpires that call strikes make the game better. Them guys with that tight zone is not good for, for college baseball. If you call them pro ball, that's different. Where pitchers can throw that ball in a certain location. Now the mound visit just to make sure everything is okay. Bases loaded, one out here, top of the fourth inning. Well, just about done with the mound visit. I'll tell you what, when you come out to the uh, ballpark on your first day of the tournament, that's usually one of the longer days. Yeah. Louise now coming to the plate. Add pitch in there for a strike. But you Peterson wants that strike back that uh, he had with the officials, the umpire called it the ball. On one the count, one out here in the top of the fourth. Shot six, four, oh. and an error. Here's a throw home, nowhere near. Two run score for Jackson State. Let's see what the shortstop did all he could and it was a difficult throw for the second baseman. Let's see, let's see. Okay. There's a six four. Oh behind him. Oh he got taken out. That yeah. should have been a double play. Should have been automatic. Well, two runs scored. Now the score is tied. Gomez at the plate. Two to two is our score now. Three hits on each side. One air for Grambling. The winner of this game, of course, will play tomorrow night again. Southern or Grambling? I mean, Southern. Here's a shot into left center. 
it's so easy when you take good basic swings, don't overswing. Mm -hmm. You're able to have a lot of success. You stay on top of the ball, you use the whole field. So, Saavedra is coming up to the plate. Two men on with two men out here in the bottom of the, or top of the fourth inning at pitch in there for a strike. Well, if you are watching this and you are in the Atlanta area, you could do yourself a big favor and come on by. There's a bump down the third base line, foul. That's not advisable to bunt with two outs. You got a man in scoring position on second. Why leave it up to the next guy? And that's all you're doing by bunting, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Saying, okay, you knock him in. So Vedra at the plate, two strikes, two outs. Peterson trying to get out of this inning. Swung on That's and hit in the right field. It should be an action at home plate. Oh, he stopped him. Good throw. Base is loaded now. That was pretty good coaching. He realized that the you know, right fielder had a good throw in on. And he made a one-hop throw really good. The riverboat gambling in me would have sent him. <laughs> a riverboat gambler. Of course, I would have taken into consideration who I had on second. Got to have some speed out there. Yeah, well, yeah, and I would have been saying, you got to score on this hit. hit. I would plant that seed in his mind. That So he's got to take a good lead off of second. Was there ever a player that you saw that was just so fast it was almost unbelievable to watch? I ain't never had that one. I had some fast guys, but not unbelievable. You know. Like guys that could run 100 on the track team, they were so fast. No, the track guy ain't the same as running fast out here because of the cuts. Yeah. You got me, a, a track guy straight ahead. Out here, you got to be fast cutting. You know, you got angles, you got to hit, you got. So. How was Weeks? You know, he's a Milwaukee Brewer. I was Weeks was pretty good, uh, but he wasn't necessarily my fastest guy. Swung I've had guys it. like Will Bates and Fred Lewis, Corey Gilkey. Them guys were on the base pads were pretty good, you know. Here's a pitch. Swung on and miss or strike. Now, Centura, the only, re the other reason I might have sent, sent that guy is that he hit him. And that's going to send him the first. Why throw in? That guy's a weak hitter. I was about to say, only reason I would have sent him, that guy not being that good of a hitter. You were talking about your ninth hole hitter. Well, one run is in. And remember what we said, Jackson, you do not want to let this team hang around. That's a dangerous team. Yeah. And they're healthier now. That's the other thing. Yeah. Outside for a ball. Ideally, Grambling does not want to have to go to the bullpen here early on. Jackson wants to make Grambling go to the bullpen and keep out in front of them. Defensively, Jackson is playing pretty good. Yeah, Jackson definitely want to make him go to the pen. That's going to be a ball. See, the coach can't go back out there because he's already been once yep. in the in this inning. He can't go back this inning. So he's forced to get his, his players to help settle down the pitcher, which the catcher is yet to move. He usually is the leader. Go talk to him. And he's still not 
warming up anyone. Nope, no one in the bullpen right now for Gramley. They don't want to right nope, now. Absolutely not. Shot. Trouble. No, they did baseman. take that. And they finally get out of the inning. But Jackson State battled, batted around here in the. They batted around in this inning. Three to two is our score. Three runs, three hits, one air, three men left on base. Not a good number there. Five men left on base so far for Jackson State. We'll take this time out. We'll be right back. That's a pretty tight spot. Watch this. Of course your view parks itself. That's so you. It's just up here on the right. Of course you know where we're going. That's so you. Kind of got a sixth sense. And a head-up display. I hit the field, warm up. You brought all these players in your Buick? Yeah. So you. It is. There's a Buick that fits your life because at the heart of every Buick SUV, Cameron Buffard up to bat now for the Grambling Tigers as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Jackson on top, three to two, Coach. We talked yep. about this. Coach Omar Johnson, very seasoned in the tournament, understands to win. The regular season is a marathon, but in the tournament, it's a little bit different. It's a lot different. <laughs> and that's where experience pays dividend, you know. Usually guys don't panic with experience. They understand certain things can and will happen. That pitch in there for a strike. At times we see teams that have been very good in the regular season, not very good in the tournament. Yeah, I've seen that a lot. Yep. Kind of like uh, some students who are very good at school, but then not good at tests. That's right, yeah. <laughs> And this is what this is a test. It's more of a final exam. Yeah. All before you were getting the regular exam. Now, the t t tournament is your final exam. Final exam. Can you pass that test? The questions are a little harder. <laughs> Absolutely. And, the, the teacher didn't write them. You didn't study them in the book. You had to <laughs> figure them out. You, yeah, and that's the thing is that you got to figure it out in the tournament. And normally, you know, it's all about if you got a little bit more depth in pitching, if you got, you know, how are your bats in the tournament? Healthy a team, shot right yeah. to the shortstop. Long throw and in time. Great throw by Gomez, getting it to Merceman. And Buffer. Guichard coming up to the back, coming up to the plate. You said that's a Louisiana name. Well, I'm trying. Here's a shot straight it's up in the air foul. It sounds like it. And our producer, James, breathes a sigh of relief every time a ball goes up in the air. <laughs> it's going to be tough for a ball to come through and get us. It's got to be perfect, you know. Well, he breathes a sigh of relief because of those cameras. <laughs> yeah. They're all over the field. 
And pitch for a ball. 3-2 our score. Shot to the third baseman. This is going to be a long throw, and it is not in time. catch it coming up. Oh, man. He went back to catch it. See, the hop was big enough where he could have come up and he would have had an opportunity. This is a game of inches. When you give, see, he could have come up. Right there. He could have come up right there. Could have took a 45 degree angle. Game. This game is a matter of inches. And yeah. that one right there proves why it is a matter of inches. Right. Because if he takes that 45 degree angle, then he can make catch and then throw the first. See, he had to sit anyway. He had to sit going back on the ball. There you go. Swung on, and here's the throw to the second baseman. He goes just to the edge of the infield. So You luckily, never want the ball thrown on that side of the base when there is a st stolen base attempt because you never go get him hardly. Yeah, he has to come. If he gets the ball, he has to come yeah, all the way right, back across right, his yeah, body. Yeah, it's too difficult at that point. Pitch to the outside for a ball. Now, with a bunt attempt here, with one out, I don't mind it as much because it's a left-hand hitter with third base back. So it, that is more acceptable. But in reality, you want a guy swinging right here. Mm -hmm. You don't want somebody else to have to do his job. Vargas at the plate. That pitch missing for a ball. A walk is just as good as a hit. It is. You don't make it out. And I used to tell my players, a walk is just as good as a hit, knowing that it buys time for the next hitter. Now, this kid took a third strike the last time. He tried to bunt. Got to swing the bat. Marcellus up to the plate. Need to swing the bat. Here's a pitch. Ooh. I call it a ball. This, this umpire really something, man. Good pitch for a strike. Marcelo won't swing the bat. He's getting himself in the hole. Only way I know to hear this is the swing. Yeah, I haven't known them to uh, invent a different way yet. No, he got hit. No, he got hit. So he was smart. Unless his dad is so rich, he tell that pitcher, you better throw the ball where it's going to hit my son's back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so a hit batsman now. Or something else. Ella Fitzgerald. Ella Fitzgerald. Oh, and, man. Yeah. Well, another visit to the mound. Now, well, this is from first Omar, one. yeah, first one. Omar walks here, huh? Look at him. <laughs> and there's nobody warming up down in the bullpen right now. No, not with the fourth inning. Unless, unless Coach Johnson has, is coming out to talk to an umpire, I've never really known him to sprint out to the mound to talk to a player. Yeah. Now to an official, yeah. Yeah, he's sprinting. He want him to hear it right away. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Terry Burrell Jr., to the third, rather, <sighs> flew out to the right fielder in the first, I should say, third inning. We got the bases loaded here. He could do some damage. 
That pitch up and in the zone. And that one is in there for a strike. Good block by the catcher. If you're Womble, you have to watch those pitches. Yeah. 501 ERA, eight and two on the season. Two consecutive games that we've seen really good pitching. And good pitchers. Yeah. yeah. Wombles eight and two. Lorenzo six and two. That one anywhere for a strike. Man, you can't keep taking two strikes with a, with the bases loaded. You gotta swing the bat. I'd be real careful it doesn't freeze up here. Double play. And he got it. This is what happens when you don't swing early in the count. Well, double play. No runs, one hit, no errors, two men left on base. We now go to the fifth inning. Charles Bishop will be coming up, talking to our coaches in just a moment, right here on the SWAC Digital Network. Back here at in this 2023 SWAC Baseball Tournament, McNeese Baseball Park here in Atlanta, in the Midtown area. On the campus of Georgia Tech University. I just say, should say just Georgia Tech. Ty Hill at the plate for Jackson State. Shot down the third baseline. Foul. Well, the music world lost a legend today. Tina Turner, who has uh, suffered ill health in recent years, being diagnosed with intestinal cancer in 2016, had a kidney transplant in 2017, passed away today at the age of 83. Pitch to the outside for a ball. Tina Turner, of course, great music over the decades. Tremendous artist. That pitch missing for a ball. Oof. 
crowd does not like that. If you're Jackson, you're going to take the breaks anywhere you can. <laughs> Strike three. One out. Pitcher who lives on the outside corner usually enjoys a great number of success. A greater number of success. Because kids chase those pitches. Brett Mersman will come to the plate. Scored a run back in the fourth inning. Now back up to the plate again. We're coming after this inning. And we're going to go down here to Charles Bishop here. Charles, uh, did you want to take it away, sir? Yeah, I'm down here with Coach Omar Johnson. Coach, you guys were able to get out of a little bit of a jam last uh, inning. 6-4-3 double play. Great defensive play. Yep, they're in the right position to turn double play. Uh, Coach, what's been your assessment of your pitcher, Christian Womble, thus far in this game? Uh, you went out and talked to him uh, uh, in the last inning, and you guys were able to get out of it. He's got to get ahead. Get ahead, bounce, he'll, he'll get through. Sure thing, Coach. Let's get back to it. All right, thanks a lot, Charles. And uh, he'll visit with Coach Davin Pierre coming up in the bottom half of the fifth inning. It was vintage Omar. Very short, short sweet. into the. <laughs> <laughs> it was vintage. Yeah. He is not a man of many words. Not a man of many words. You know. And he's smiling down there, which is good. Mm -hmm. There's some. Uh, there's research that was done that said Omar, if you smile. You live longer than if you frown. <laughs> Here is a base hit in the right center. And coming around is M Mersman in the second with a double. Coach, remember we talked about this earlier, how dangerous this Jackson team. And as, even though they had some health problems, they got healthier <laughs> as they got near the tournament. You let them stick around. Now they're <laughs> a man on with... A 3-2 lead. Plus, they got history. Yeah. Gremlin has history, but not lately like Jackson. So you got to be careful playing around. See, Gremlin can't go to the bullpen and get much out of there. Miles White now will come to the plate. Got a double, scored a run the last inning. Three runs, six hits, no errors for Jackson State. That's and here's the shot, and this one is dropped in right field. This is going to be a close play at second base, and the runner is safe. Miles White goes in with a double. I love this aggressiveness. This is what I'm talking about. He saw that the, the second baseman wasn't alert, and he took advantage of it. Yeah. But not that's not it. Here is where he saw the second baseman wasn't watching, and he said, I'm going to make you throw me out. Well, it's the shortstop, you know. They will not give that an error. They'll give no, that a hit. No, that's a hit. Yep. See that? That's big. Here's a chopper. Oh. Over the head of the shortstop. Coming in is Mersman. White is in. And Jackson State. Let's go back to that video. I want to show almost a boo-boo on the number 11 at third base. Almost a boo-boo. He's supposed to be coming. The infielders are back. Look what he does. He goes back here. And now the ball is hit. He stops. And he got in trouble because the run on second was coming. He should have been gone soon. Contact was initiated. And he didn't do it. But they got lucky. And sometimes you'd rather be lucky than good. Lucky than good. That's exactly right. And another hit on the board for Jackson State. Look at here. Well, it didn't, didn't show everything we need to see. That was a mean hop that took. It's a Baltimore there. hop. That's a Baltimore hop. <laughs> it was a Baltimore hop. 
You got to really be a baseball person to know about the Baltimore Hawks. I didn't know about that till you told me. <laughs> That's a strike. Okay, now watch. He's supposed to be walking, not coming back. Watch he's done. What happens here? See, stop it. Come back. Never do that. You're going on contact, and you can't score on contact if you, you saw where he took his step back. And that's what – things like that cost you games. If that kid makes the play, you got – you really got a boo-boo. Then you get two outs. You, possibly you get might two get outs two outs on yeah. that, yeah. Marshall Luis. So he got away with it, and if the coaches don't tell him, he'll do it again. Keep it moving. Well, that's it was a contact play. The infield was back. And this one going into oh, good gonna play. Stop it. And a great play. Second baseman has made some good plays over there. Kyle Walker, a reason why he's on one of the all conference teams is because of his great defense. Moves yeah. well and recovers extremely well. Yes. Yeah, look at that. I mean, he goes a long way. And then get his body set to make the throw. Big throw by Kyle Walker, 4-3 to three on the putout. <laughs> Two outs. Now Gomez up to the plate for Jackson State. Now Gremlin has got some action down there. With a side on the left-hander. Can't see his number. They call time on the field. On the uh, warming up, Ethan Bates, the junior. Pretty good Wednesday night crowd here. Well, you know, Gramlin has got a good following here in the city in Jackson also. Foul. One and two now the count. As long as it's not a game after this one tonight. Oh. <laughs> or show me that it isn't, Mr. Producer. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I don't know if I'd make it. <laughs> hey, this is only your second one. Yeah, today. but I've been traveling since 5 o'clock this morning. <laughs> oh, you were traveling. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, that makes a difference. Two hours sleep. Yeah. Great job by Chris Marcellus, the catcher for Grambling, getting in front of the ball. 2-2 Two -two the count. He's taking a good lead. Chopper, oh, he's, he's going to beat it. He's safe. That's just flat out speed. Shortstop took it for granted. Let's see. Get rid of that ball. Put something on it. Put something on it. He tried. He tried. Great job by the base runner and Gramlin couldn't appeal anyway because they've used it up Saavedra on to hit for Jackson State boy hit here would do some damage five to two the uh, six to two rather five it, to two it would put five run the lead where Grand Slam couldn't beat you or tie you and that's the philosophy. If you can get five up, you're, you, you're safe from a grand slam. Yep. Up by three right now, five to two. Five runs, nine hits, no errors. Grand I thought it was six. Six, I'm sorry. It's five. Oh, it's it five. five. Okay. Ooh, my eyes ain't the right. It's my bad, as the young <laughs> people would say. My bad. <laughs> five to two, our uh, score, Jackson State on top. All you young people out there, yes, I'm saying this is my bad. Don't bunt there. Outside. Down. 
the biggest thing that uh, coaches tell their players is, what are you doing in the classroom to get ready after you play ball? This pitch low. What are you doing in the classroom? What are you doing in the classroom to get you ready after you play ball? After. In other words, are you going to class and you, you so you can school, graduate? So you can graduate. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Now Gremlin went to a righty. They saw the switch up and went to a right hand to warming up. That tells me he's thinking something different. This one popped up. And caught. It stayed in. Two runs for Jackson State. We'll take this time out. We'll be right back. Back here at the 2023 SWAC Baseball Tournament. Let's go down to Charles Bishop. Yeah, Santori, I tell you what, uh, Jackson State was able to scratch out a few runs that pass in it. Uh, you know, it's fun always trying to uh, interview Coach uh, Omar Johnson. Uh, he is a, a ball of laughs, I tell you. <laughs> we will get Coach Pierre after this uh, inning. Of course, he's out there on the third baseline. But uh, Jackson State, uh, they are showing uh, championship grit, if you will. And that's one of those things that every one of these coaches talk about, showing a championship mentality, fighting back from some adversity. And they were able to get some runs that inning. All right, thanks a lot, Charles. We will get to Coach Pierre. Three balls, no strikes right now to Tiger Borum, who had a home run scored in the third. And a walk to start things off. Not good. They give you a run and you walk the first guy. You got to always say, make him put the ball in play. He might hit it to somebody. You got eight people behind you. That could, well, seven. And he will be eight that could catch it, and nine with the catcher. So. First pitch in there for a strike, Kyle Walker. From New Orleans, Louisiana, transferred from Louisiana Tech. Foul tip, and it's a strike. 0-2 oh, the count. Uh, you know, we talked to some of these guys who are director of baseball operations if teams have the have uh, director of operations, and there's a lot of planning that goes into coming to a tournament from the day that you leave until the meals that you're going to eat mm -hmm. during the course of the tournament, if you're going to practice or not on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. You know, if you win, you know, if you lose, all of those things, so many moving parts that a person has to be aware of. Yeah, you got to wash clothes, uniformed, and I mean, it's just so much that the average person don't think about, you know? Yeah. 
And this is an organization when you get everybody doing their job, playing their role, you know. There's a shot in the right center that is going to fall all the way to the wall. Is there going to be a runner coming around? Here comes Borum, and he's in for a run. Doesn't matter. You give them some run, they give it back. Now, they've missed the, the cutoff. Not that they would have had any play on it, but you still want to hit the cutoff. Nice, solid hit. Right in, just right over the head of the outfielders. go all the way to the wall. Didn't hit the cutoff, man. Trevor Hatton now up, I should say, uh, yeah, Trevor Hatton up to bat. Five three, our score. Grandling scoring a run here in the fifth. For Jackson State, they're trying to protect the lead here. For a lot of that, it's just making sure that they don't make mistakes. Swung on and missed for a strike. Great pitch there. Oh, yeah, down in the zone. Bunt down the line. That is a perfect bunt. Oh, it's a foul. <laughs> that was close to perfect. Uh, oh, my goodness. Boy, look at the placement on that bunt. And they had to wait that one out just to make sure they didn't touch it and make sure it rolled on its own foul. Oh, man. Come on, Omar. <laughs> the ball. Well, the ball was foul. I mean, it rolled yeah. foul. But he's arguing about, he's he making them about something else. The ball didn't hit the kid. Bottom of the fifth. So for those who are watching, there are four officials in all of these games, I think six in the championship game. Could be. But of course there is a, there's an, um, there is an, an umpire every single bag. Yeah, right now, and then you can't one on each line. Straight up. Overswung. This one could be caught. And Ty Hill gets the first out. That was a classic case of overswinging. And that plays right into the hand of a pitcher. Keelan Mack coming up to the plate. Now, he tried overswing the last time and swung straight up and popped it up. So let's see if he can redeem himself. I know you've seen them. They're all hitting it out there. I can hit it too. Well, you got to do it. And the ball gets away from the catcher, and the runner goes to third base. Only one out here in the bottom of the fifth. Keela Mack. There's a shot in the right field. That's foul. a foul oh. ball. Ooh. It's hung up too long. Can't argue that one. No. Plus, the umpire did a great job. Look at the umpire. Just look at him. He's staring it down. There you go. 
He's layering it down. And that's what you want. You want to see that. You know he's got every angle covered. Mm -hmm. One and one to count. And a swung on and miss. One out here. There's another pop-up. This one's out of play. Here's a pitch. Swung on a miss, strike three. That's the thing about Mac. He can be pitched to. And he could be pitched to away, like this pitch is right there, away. Can't do anything with it. Look at here. Nope, just look at it. It was not a strike. Somebody's popping the mid in the Gremlin bullpen. Foul off. And that's number 12, Philip Bryant. Oh, okay. Here's a pitch. There it goes. Well, here comes a run scored after the air. I should say pass ball. Are they give him a wild pitch? Yeah. Not winning kind of baseball. You scored two runs, you came back and gave up two. And it has happened more than once, so. Five to four the score. And it's a result of not having that quality catcher. Yeah. You know, the ball that bounced away could have smothered it. The ball here could have caught it. I mean, you know. There's a shot in the right center and another base hit for the Grambling Tigers. Keyshard now coming to the plate, and we'll have a momentary timeout here. Uh, Coach Pierre talks to one of his players, Trevor Hatton. Telling him he love him, he's going to give him a steak dinner tonight <laughs> if he could get a big hit. Huh? That'd be a reason for a big hit. Going to the best steakhouse in Atlanta. Woo! Gonna pay a pretty penny for that. That's a ma doesn't matter. If he goes yard, he got it. See what and I'm talking it about? It is a pass ball. This is uh, this is how you lose games. That's it. I mean, you know, this is uh, it's unacceptable if you're going to win games. Five to four. Now he just on. got lazy. He wouldn't move. Yep. You know. Now Omar has got to go out, and then it's really not all the pitcher's fault. No. Nope. Man, in the big leagues, they throw pitches out there like that. You got to block them. Well, Coach Johnson just taking a stroll out to the mound. While we have this opportunity, let's kind of go over the brackets for tomorrow. Fame you should say, let's start at 9 a.m. Texas Southern will battle against Prairie View. That's the 9 a.m. grits and egg session of baseball tomorrow morning. And then coming up at 12 noon, Bethune Cookman plays the loser of this game today. Bethune Cookman and the loser of this game. Then at 3 p.m., Fame you and Alabama State. And then at 6 p.m. that evening, it will be Southern against the winner of this game. You broke that nine nicely, down really nicely. Appreciate it. And that pitch is in there for a strike. 
All you was telling me, I got to work four games tomorrow. Four games you, tomorrow. You reminded me. That's all. Once I'm here, I can't leave. No, sir. Ooh, that's a good, that's a swing. Let's see if Guichard can do something with it. And it is fouled away. Here's a pitch. Swung on and miss. Strike three. And that'll be it for Grambling. Two runs, two hits, no errors. One man left on base. Now going to the sixth inning. We come back. We'll hear from Charles Bishop and Coach Davin Pierre right after this. There be no doubt. You are ready for whatever comes next. You've got bars to raise, expectations to exceed, status quos to rise above, and you've come to the right place because it all starts right here, which is precisely why we are so proud to support HBCU programs. Back here at the 2023 SWAT Baseball Tournament. A new pitcher in the ball game for the Grambling State University Tigers. They'll send to the mound Phil Bryant, the senior right-hand pitcher. He will come into the ball game and now coming up to bat for Jackson State is Jatavis Melton. Melton has struck out a couple of times, has reached base by being hit by a pitch. Let's go down to Charles, down to, down in the dugout. Yeah, go down here with Coach Davin Pierre. Coach, we talked about it yesterday over there in the batting cages. You got to be able to answer a rally with the rally. You guys were able to scratch two back uh, across this past inning. Yeah, that, that, that's what we did. We responded to, you know, their inning. You know, it, it, you know it, the players, the game is kind of made up between double plays. If they turned their double play, we didn't turn ours. But yet still, man, you know, we're finding a way to scratch away and stay in the game. Uh, you went to the bullpen. You brought in Phil Bryant. Uh, what sort of arsenal does he have? Uh, he, he's he's going he's gonna to have a fastball. He's going to have a good big-time breaking ball, man. Hopefully the velo can beat him a little bit, and then we can change speeds with the, with the curveball. But, you know, we got to defend. If we defend better than we're doing right now, we'll be in a better position. Sure thing, Coach. Let you get back to it. Well, Coach Pierre said it. you got to defend better than what they have been so far. That's right. 
And that's important. You know, uh, he said they turned the double play, they didn't. You know. Here's a pitch, swung on, and this is gonna be hit a ton. This is going back in deep, and it's gonna hit the big green wall. Well, it didn't hit the green one, it hit the black one. Well, the black one. Because the green one would have been out. And so Jatavis Melton. Gets the double to start things off here in this inning. Oh, yeah. Let's see where it hits. Yeah, it didn't hit the green. Yeah, it, hit the, it did hit the black one. Well, come on, Omar. <laughs> That's what he wants to know. Yeah. Did it hit the green wall? <laughs> the umpire's trying to explain to him. Come on, you know. Huh? Yeah, we saw it, yeah. Omar didn't see it. He's the only one in the park. <laughs> Daniel Bannon now coming to the plate for Jackson State. And you got to understand, he's going to argue everything he can. Oh, yeah, there's no doubt. That's part of his M.O. He's a baseball politician, and this That's is right. an out. Popped up, and that is an out. Now Omar doesn't like that. That's a wasted out. Wasted out, didn't didn't commit all the way. See, he didn't commit all the way. Commit and had the bat back here rather than in front of him. Watch it like, well, we'll see. See where the commitment is? The bat has got to be out in front if you're going to commit to a bunt. See, it's back there, leaning. And that's causing him to not have control of the ball. Five to four, now there's two men of there's one man aboard here for Jackson State. That one swung on foul. Top six. And for the Grambling Tigers. Bryant trying to see what's going on, and that's going to be an out. Picked him off at second base. Should never happen. Omar wants to look at it. He's not going to let that go. And they will go and look at the film. Let's see. Oh, they got him. Oh, he's oh, never yeah. got there. Yep. The pitcher really waited too long. And then the, the runner was caught way He's out way there. He's way there. No yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's out. Yep, he's out. Yeah, he was way out there in no man's land. Yeah, right there. Still trying to get there. So it would be one to four caught stealing if they keep that call. Oh, he's going to be killed. Yeah. It, 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 there's nothing that would take you overturn it. That's, yeah, you can see clearly that yeah, there was space yeah. in between his hand and the bag. Yeah. And I think Melton is more upset at himself than he was at the official because he got caught way out there. Way out there. There it comes from Joe Smith. Umpire Joe Smith will make the call. Right there, you out. Yeah. Our producer had it really. Uh, I mean, he made that really easy for the pitcher. Yeah. Our producer's three for three today? Did he call that? It's three for three. 
Yes. He's good. Yeah. That's why he's the producer. And here's a shot back into the net. The good thing about that, Omar cannot appeal anymore. Am I correct? I think that's right. It's less than eight innings. It's the fifth, sixth inning. So is it. He can go out there, but he won't be able to appeal. Swung on and miss. Boy, that could be a backbreaker right there. We had a bum, bun attempt, bouch, bun attempt, a pickoff, a ball that hit the wall, three or four inches could have gone out. Oh, tough, devastating ending. Five to four, our score. We'll take this time out. We'll be right back. Back here at the 2023 SWAC Baseball Tournament. Don't walk away from love. Good music being played. Yeah, oh, great music. This is, uh, you know, Mark is taking the good care of everybody. It's not just, he's giving them a variety. He's giving some rap music, but he's playing for the other people. So everybody can enjoy. Absolutely. Great family atmosphere here at yeah. the ballpark. And that pitch to the outside for a ball. We had the devastating news of uh, Tina Turner passing today. Tina Turner, yep. She uh, was, you know, of course, she had been suffering a long illness. She had intestinal cancer. She was mm -hmm. diagnosed with that back in six, 16, I believe. And here's a shot fouled. And then, of course, uh, had a kidney transplant. And yeah. so she's, you know, she had been, she had been ill quite a while. So, yeah. But she had, she hung in there. She did, you know. She, she did well. Yep, there was talk that uh, she was getting better at one point in 21 and 22, and she was possibly going to be able to do a few things, but uh, just didn't work out the way that uh, that they wanted. She it. gave us many good years. Oh, yeah, and great music. You know, she survived Ike Turner. Man. God, she got away from him. And her legs were still gorgeous to the end. Jose Vargas <laughs> at the plate. <laughs> You have a way of leaving people speechless. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was one of our strong series. Oh, my goodness. Shot Andrew! right back at the pitcher. Nice stab at it. Yeah. I'll tell you what. The uh, pitcher had to really move out the way. It's a new pitcher. Wow.
Throw back to first, not in time. Chris Marcellus coming up to the plate. He got hit last time. He got the butt down. And they get the force at first, or get the choice at first. There was no need for the third baseman to be going over there where the ball is bunted down the first baseline. He was close. I saw it. Almost knocked it out of the pitcher's head. Terry Burrell, the third, coming up now. Flew out to the right fielder, hit into a double play, 6 4 3, back in the fourth inning. And now he'll try to. Not going to run Jackson State, trying to keep that one-run lead. Swung on and missed. Great throw. Dealing Caraway, the junior, on the mound here for Jackson State. Here's a throw. Swung on and miss. It's really going to depend who's got the best bullpen. Is it Gramlin or Jackson? Who's going to be able to give them nine more outs? In Gremlin's case, they've got 12 more outs. In Jackson's case, they got nine more outs. I think the key here for Jackson is you keep it low scoring, you keep playing good defense, keep the pitching going, it plays in your favor. If you're Grambling, you start hitting, those bats start warming up, plays into your favor. Yes. Swung on and hit. Back to the backstop. It's really who is going to be able to manage pitches now. Because all pitches become quality. They become high level quality pitches you need to make. Infield got to try and knock the ball down here. Here's the pitch swung on and it's going to be hit to the second baseman over to first for the out. 0 for 3 on the night for Terry Burrow, the third. And now back to the top of the lineup. Tiger Borum. Tiger Borum with two runs scored in this ballgame, including a home run. I got to give Co Coach Pierre credit. He, he still tried to play small ball. Momentary stoppage of play. That pitch missing for a ball. He didn't give up on small ball. I think that's commendable because he's still saying we got to get the hit with two outs. That went in there for a strike. One and one to count with two outs. Five runs, ten hits, no errors for Jackson State. Four runs, seven hits, one error for Gramlin. bit low for a ball. Early game tomorrow for Texas Southern and Prairie View, 9 a.m. The loser of this game will play the second game at 12 noon in an elimination game. So two elimination games to start the day. Tomorrow here at the ballpark. Bad pitch is a ball. The winner of this game plays Southern. And then, of course, FAMU plays Alabama State at 3 p.m. tomorrow. Game between Southern and the winner of this game will be the nightcap tomorrow. Somebody's going to go home tomorrow. Two, two teams will go home tomorrow. Oh, yeah, well. And that's a walk. That is the third time, I think the fourth time, that Baram has been on base tonight. Now Walker coming to the plate. You know, in our conversation with the commissioner talking about all the great legacy and all the great tradition of this conference and how more people are buying in and more people are recognizing the brand. And that's all good for this conference. It's very good for the conference. You know, people are, are really recognizing the conference all over the country. That pitch in there for a strike. 
I think Walker is more of a danger out than Borg was. I think I'm looking at his approach in there. If the if this pitcher leaves something over the plate, he could do some damage. Who inside? Nearly hit his left shoulder. Two outs here. Bottom of the sixth inning. And if you are the Jack State Tigers, you want to get out of here without any damage. Swung on and missed for a strike. Overswung. You got to just try to stay within yourself here. Swinging hard doesn't mean you're going to hit the ball hard. Usually you miss it more than you hit it. But if you stay through the zone, like, okay. Check swing. Good. Board another swing. You board another pitch. That's why pitchers usually make mistakes when you foul off tough pitches. It's hard for a pitcher to make two tough pitches in a row. Yeah. And, you know, for hitters, it's just a question of being disciplined and knowing when to swing and when That's not right. to swing. Exactly. Dylan Caraway with the pitch. Swung oh, on. Four, four. That was a good one. Now, this is where pitchers and catchers try to get too smart. Mm -hmm. They figure we can go with an off, something and trick him here. Let's see if they're going to go and say, well, let's try to trick him. Here's the throw. Swung Up on. Up the middle. Out. He hit the he tagged the bag and that's an out. Great defensive play. We got it right here on replay. That is a great defensive play by the second baseman. Look, Look at that at stretch. The ball hit. Look at that stretch. Yeah. Moving away and he stretched and tagged yeah. the bag. That's just great baseball IQ. Send it to ESPN. We're going to take a timeout. Five to four, our score. We move to the seventh. Back after this. That's a pretty tight spot. Watch this. Of course your Buick parks itself. That's so you. It's just up here on the right. Of course you know where we're going. That's so you. Kind of got a sixth sense. And a head-up display. They're here. I hit the field. Warm up. You brought all these players in your Buick? Yeah. So you. It is. There's a Buick that fits your life because at the heart of every Buick SUV is you. Back here at McNeely, McNeese Baseball Park here on the campus of Georgia Tech. Now batting for Jackson State University. It's going to be Brett Mersman, the senior batting 312 on the season. And while we have the opportunity, we want to mention, you know, we talk about the players and teams that go to the NC2As, and we have officials that are going to be in, going to the NC2As. Joe Smith. And Derek Everett, both will be officiating at the NC2A Regionals. And Eric Gauthier, he's been named as one of the umpires at the Super Regionals. That is a huge accomplishment. First time two umpires going to the, uh, the NCAA Regional. First time from the swag. That's incredible. So, very incredible. Well, I'm very proud of them. They've done a good job. They've worked hard. And you got to give the commissioner some credit for hiring the right guy. Yeah who brought in the right guys. Well, and, and look, officials, umpires get a lot of flack because everything in baseball is about judgment. And so for them to be able to 
get this kind of recognition. I mean, it just goes along to say to see what the, the conference has already been doing. We've seen officials in basketball able to go to the NC2A. So I think we've had a couple go to the Final Four. I mean, it's just really just a great opportunity here for the SWAC to continue to put uh, people on the, on the highest level. That's right. I agree with you. And, you know, when Robert Holloway was hired to be the supervisor, things really took off because he said, I'm going to get the best I can get. And that's not an easy job. It's not because we historically don't pay what some of those big conferences are paying. And, you know, it's all about people making money. But because of his credibility, people came along with him. Strikeout, and that's the first out here in the seventh. You know, and that's the whole thing is that you, you, you really do have to know, have the, that eye for the talent, not only on the player side, coach's side, but also for umpires and also for yeah. officials. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In there for a strike. And I can tell you right now, when you become an official, I've had that ability to do that. <laughs> well, I should say I did that in my past life. <laughs> it is one of those things where it is a thankless job. You get, you know, called everything but a child of God in the Bible. Yeah, right. And, you know, it, sometimes, you, you know, people hate you. Sometimes people love you. But the, right. the biggest thing is when you get that kind of respect like these gentlemen have, it really says a lot about what you're doing and what the conference is doing. That's right. There's a strike. I got to give my man credit. He coming in there throwing strikes. Miles White. It's inside for a ball. Two and two the count with one out. Yeah, Phillip Bryant ain't playing around. Mm -mm. He's coming right at him. No, nope. Bryant wants to try to get these guys down as quick as possible and get Gramley back up to the plate and try to score a run or two. And there's a swing for a strike. That's the second strikeout of the inning. Now, if you're Jackson State, you want to put somebody on the bags right now, try to extend that lead at least by a run or two, putting a little pressure on Gramley. They have not been hitting the ball as well. And so with that being said, not pushing those runs across the plate, Jackson State keeping Grambling off of out of the uh, batter's box is really going to help them. Yeah. That pitch misses for a ball. Marcus Atterbury at the plate. Hitting 322. Here is the pitch. Swung on and hit foul. Turned out to be a great day. And so if you are watching the broadcast, we invite you to come on over to McNeese Ballpark. And there's a base hit in the left center. And Atterbury putting one on the bags. And it was a nice, easy swing. The swing before that was a, a ball swing he was trying to run the pitch on. So now he took a short swing to the ball, and he got a hit. Let's see it right here. Just short swing to the ball. Look at that, nice and short to the ball. I didn't have to see the replay. I pretty much know, I could tell. Here's a shot. Nice job. An unassisted play by the shortstop and that retires Jackson State. No runs, one hit, no errors and one man left on base we now go to the bottom of the seventh it's seventh inning stretch it's all about outs now you can start counting we'll take this time out we'll be right back
Trevor Hatton will start things off here for the Grambling Tigers, and he ropes one into left field for a base hit. Grambling has one aboard now. Keelan Mack now coming to the plate. Keelan Mack. Oh, this is what you live for. Five to four, the score. Look at the catcher again. It ain't the pitcher. <laughs> So Trevor Haddon advances. And now that will put Trevor Haddon on second with Keelan Mack at the plate. I had the feeling that catcher was night wasn't through after. <laughs> He's, uh, it's Here's a shot there by you go. Keelan Mack. I told him it's you up, live for it. It's up and it is out of here. I told him he lived for this. Keelan Mack has just given the Grambling Tigers a six to five lead over Jackson State here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Look at that home run again, coach. Okay. Oh, he hit it. Didn't overswing. It was a nice short swing. Look at that. They are giving a warning to the Grambling dugout. And Coach Davin Pierre not happy with the third base umpire at all. Oh, Mac looked at this one. He said, I've been waiting all day. Oh, he looked at it. Oh, the trees are beautiful. He gonna say, Mama, I hit it in the trees. You should have seen it. <laughs> Coach Pierre, the third base umpire, not well, discussing the issue of players coming out of the dugout celebrating after the home run. Yeah, but you got the, the NCAA stuff here. Let the kids enjoy it, man. They didn't do anything, you understand? But the NCAA is instructing these umpires to clamp down on them. You got me? Mm-hmm. He's only doing what they tell him to oh, do. Oh, absolutely. But, boy, you got to let them enjoy it. That's the part of being an umpire that uh, can be difficult. Because your job is to enforce the rules. Yeah, yeah. They tell you enforce the rules. You got to be the bad guy. Yep, then you get called everything by the child of God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Pierre is trying to say, I don't want to stop them, kid. Let them go, you know? Fouled off. We've been waiting to celebrate all game. And now they're back on top, six to five. And, you know, it's, it's a balancing act because coaches want players to show fire. Yeah. To show that they're in, in the game still. Yeah. And here's a That's shot up the middle. Yeah, you want them to show fire. You look, definitely do. And you want them to celebrate when they do something good. Cameron Bufford with a base hit. Now you don't want him to go fall on the ground and dance. You don't want him to do that, do the worm or something like that. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, Guichard at the plate now for Grambling and he's showing bunt. And this is fouled off. Just put it down. You're trying to get out. You got to bunt that one. You got, you got to bunt it. Now 0-2 the count. Outside for a ball. 
you know, I was tough on the umpire, but he's been pretty doing consistent. And, you know, look, that's all you can ask is for consistency yeah. when talking about umpire. Just, you know, he's been consistent. Yeah. You, you know, can't say nothing wrong about him on that. I give him an A for consistency. Absolutely. Look, and I've yet to hear a coach like 100% of what the official calls are during the course of a game. But, you know, again, the model of consistency and just being on top of it the best that you can, you know, the game is about human error as well. The catcher nearly lets that one go. I got a text about Buford. Somebody, that's who got the hit before? That was Cameron Buford. His name is, they're saying it's pronounced... Buford. I don't know. Oh, hold on. B U U F O R D. No, I don't know. Buford. Buford. We'll get it right. Six to five is our score. If he can steal second, we're going to really get it right. Swung on and miss. Now Vargas coming to the plate. From Charlotte, North Carolina. Ball nearly got away from the catcher once again. Bluefoot. He is at first base. Well, the other thing that is important that we, we that sometimes don't get a chance to talk about is that uh, the game of baseball, the rules are ever-changing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, not only do the coaches have to keep up with that, coaches and players, but the umpires have to keep up with that as well. They have to be the bearer of the rule book. Oh, yeah. The good old bad news. <laughs> <laughs> Swung on for a foul. Yeah, and they have to go to a lot of clinics because – to stay updated with the new rule changes. Absolutely. Especially in college and high school, you know. And I, I think pretty much parents at some point is going to write the rule book for umpiring because that's all they want. I want this to be this way for my little Johnny. Yeah. And I want little Johnny to be able to enjoy success. That's what we, they're trying to do. Well, and, and, and the bottom line is, is that, you know, we, we see this now in – Little League ball and, you know, Dixie ball and things like that. We see a lot. Oh, that's a shot right off of his leg. He'll be okay. <laughs> One thing I know, they always get up. Let's see where that bounced off of. Off, Ooh, right off, off his, his knee. Foot. No, it hit, it it the, hit foot his foot or his foot. knee? It hit off his Oh, ankle. off his ankle, yeah. He's going to be all right. There's not anything that right there. See, there's not a lot the trainers could do for that. It's going to sting. If it was like in the days when we were playing, they'd say, rub it with some dirt and let's keep playing. <laughs> it always worked. Huh? Those were the good old days. Dirt healed a lot of stuff. Well, you know, there was, uh, you know, when you look at, when you look at some of the, the great – you know, trainers that have come through the SWAC, Doc Harvey, and all those guys, and they used to have concoctions that they would come up with in order to make things feel better. Rubs. Hey, and man, when we were bleeding, they said, put some dirt on it. <laughs> put some dirt in it, the bleeding stuff. Let's keep playing. Man. Oh, man. And look at me. I've lived a long life. It didn't kill me. I don't think they're going to allow you to rub dirt on it anymore. <laughs> No more dirt. I don't think so. They got chemicals all over that son of a gun now. But we used to use dirt, man. 6-5 <laughs> our score. Swung on and hit in the right field. That's going to be a base hit. Buford around second base. And he's going to come into third. Maybe he should file another one off his other foot. <laughs> 
that might get another hit. I'll tell you what, Vargas moving around the bag, and you can tell it's still stinging a little bit. Man, that's done. When he got that hit, that sting left. <laughs> hey, listen, you are listening to audience. Don't listen to me about I'm telling you, we use all that, but I'm not, hey, I'm telling you, advocating that y'all try that stuff. We got away with it. Dirt and stuff and eating dirt and putting dirt on, stop bleeding. Don't do it. We got away with it. You may not. Well, that was back We're just day. telling a story. And it's a true story Yeah. that y'all need to hear. <laughs> got a little meeting with the uh, base runners for Grambling. Two runners on the back. What Coach Pierre is probably trying to confirm what they're trying to get done. He doesn't want them to, he's verbally telling them, which is this game is really tight. That run on third base is very important. So he doesn't want them to vouch something. So he verbally told them exactly what he wanted. One out here in the inning. Tried to bunt it down the first baseline. Now, why didn't the first baseman come in? Why would he stay there? You're trying to kill a runner at home. See that? You don't want the runner to. You see what? You got me? Well, let's see what happens here because here's another bunt. And this time the pitcher has almost nowhere to go with it, nearly lost the opportunity. And now there's runners at second and third with two outs. Look at the replay again. Yeah, that kid bunny right back. Harry Urell, the third. Oh, he took a lot of time to do it, but he had something on it. And this is what happened. Coaches are forced to try something would have the higher difficulty of succeeding. A bunny is not that easy to put down and execute because kids don't do it anymore. They come to college, nobody bunts anymore. Travel ball, they let them swing. There ain't no bunny. Yeah, that was gonna be a question that I have is, if you look at all of the different things that you learn in the game of baseball, is that the most lost art, is the art of bunting? Yes, it's lost art, and you need to be able to bunt. Those, that's important to move runners alone. You got me? Yeah, so you yeah, gotta be able a, to do that. It's a lost art, and it's something because Travel ball coaches only take parents' money and they get 12, 13 kids. They play everybody, and they, mama think little Johnny is a good player mm -hmm. because he yeah. played. You got me? And he doesn't deserve to play, probably. You know, and it's just a, it's a con job, to be honest with you. I, and I'm being a little tough on, on travel ball, but listen, I work with Major League Baseball. We know what's going on with the travel ball industry. And we try to give parents a better situation for their kids. And I know they all want their kids to be participating. So we've got to find just a better way and take away these people who are just taking their money. Good play right there Shot for right the shortstop. Shot right to the shortstop over the first in time. And that retires Grambling. And Terry Burrell. He is 0 for 4 today. Two runs, four hits, no run, no errors, and two left on base. We now go to the top of the eighth. 6 5, Grambling on top.
Omar Gomez will start things off for Jackson State here in the top of the eighth inning. As the Grambling Tigers are on top six to five, Jackson State trying to regain the lead. They have been pretty much out front the entire game. It's about outs now. It's about six outs away for Grambling. And Jackson got to get, well, it's Grambling that's in control. Let's keep it there right here. They're in control. They control that destiny. Grambling scored in the third inning. And then, of course, Jackson exploded for three runs in the fourth. Uh, Grambling had one. Two more runs in the fifth for Jackson State. They made the game five to four after a two-run fifth inning for the Grambling Tigers. And then two runs for Grambling in the bottom of the seventh. That makes the score six to five. That pitch in there for a strike. I've noticed that every time someone score, somebody come back and give up runs. Yep. So let's see if the pattern exists in this inning. Here's a there shot in left is. field. Going back, it is out of here. Omar Gomez ties the game at six. This is where they exist. The, it exists. Come on, man, let them have a joy. Let and they say it's a warning now for Jackson State. Well, and that's because earlier you see that home run by Omar Gomez. <laughs> and Coach. There's Omar. Omar Johnson. <laughs> Coach Johnson out there, and he is not happy. I'm big for leaving them players alone. They're not doing anything to harm anyone else. Well, now the umpires are hearing it from Coach Johnson after hearing it from Coach Pierre <laughs> you can't just an win. inning ago. Yeah. Now, who scores last? <laughs> It's all Boy, it's a back and forth game. And we said this, this is always an epic battle. You can throw out what seeding they are coming into the tournament. When these two teams play, it is always explosive. That's right. The worst thing they could have, one is extra inning, burn up arms. You got me? Absolutely. Pitch in there for a strike. Phillip Bryant still the pitcher of record, the senior. Saavedra is at the plate. He's taking so long. It can't be that long to get the side. Here's a shot into. Oh, what a play. Taken away now. There will be no play, but a great job by the shortstop. And it looks like he was shaking up just a little bit. He's okay. I know about them guys. They always act like something old. <laughs> now Kushan. K. Jacob Kushan. Shortstop. And now coming up for Jackson State. There's a timeout now. Well, Gomar, Omar Gomez gets a home run to tie the game, and Saavedra able to get on base, and now Melton at the plate. Boy, this is the kind of baseball that you love here. Back and forth, yes. two yeah. story programs. Yes. Just Titans just battling it out. Again, they did not play this year at all and so now this is the first time that these two teams have seen each other and it's about matchups as well it's match up right exactly and we've got frankie beverly 
I feel a game of spades and bid whiz coming on listening to that music. <laughs> <laughs> Throw the first. And see, that's that's when Gramlin wasn't ex able to ex execute the run on third with the one out. All of those things come back to get you in a tight game. Absolutely. Tied at six. That went a little bit high. I think what happened to uh, Philip uh, Bright is that he came out and tried to overthrow. See, and that's what happened. Rather than stay within yourself, it's a bad location at the end of the day. And you're not going to throw hard enough to beat anybody. So if you just throw to locations. Melton hitting 323, and this one over the head oh. of the catcher. He's going to throw it to second, and it is an out. Great job by the catcher. Hit right up the backstop. He was able to get the ball recovered. Omar would have been better off hitting that run. <laughs> you know. So it's going to be a pass ball. Well, it wasn't wild, a pass ball. Pitch. It wasn't either because the runner didn't advance. It's only if the runner advances. Remember, so he just got caught stealing it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what they'll give him. It would have been a pass ball, probably. And so now that's two outs. Just to the outside. Just overthrowing right now. Yeah. It's unnecessary. And it's hard sometimes to make them understand that. So. Tied at six. Here in the top of the eighth inning, or bottom of the eighth. Top of the eighth inning. Right? Top, yeah. And that pitch is in there for a strike. Six runs, 13 hits, no errors. For Jackson State, six runs, 11 hits, one air for the Grambling Tigers. Shot to the third baseman. Here's the throw by Vargas in time to retire Jackson State. One run, two hits, Jackson no airs. And nobody left on. We will take a timeout. 6-6. Six, six. We'll be right back.
That's a pretty tight spot. Watch this. Of course your beard barks itself. That's so you. It's just up here on the right. Of course you know where we're going. That's so you. Kind of got a six sense. And a head-up display. They're here. I hit the field. Warm up. You brought all these players in your Buick? Yeah. So you. It is. There's a Buick that fits your life because at the heart of every Buick SUV is you. Tiger Bourne will start things off here in the bottom of the eighth inning. If you're Jackson, you just want to make sure you get to the top of the ninth without Grambling scoring. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, you got three outs to put up a run. Yeah. Here's a shot in the right field. That's a fair ball. Borum is going to round first. He's going double. into second with a stand-up double. Now, execution is paramount of importance here. You got a lead-off double. You got to get him to third base. And how do you do it? You got Walker, who is an experienced player. I saw the trust him. And of course, it was a ground rule double because it that ball is fence. that ball is visible. He did. Oh, it went to the bullpen. Oh, Popped okay. Over that fence. Oh, yeah. okay. You got an experienced guy. That's going to be a strike. I trust. I trust him. I trust Walker will get this bunt down because of his experience. He understands. All I need to do is get it down the third baseline. That's going to be a ball. Combined 25 hits in this ball game so far. A lot of hits came late, though. Yep. First two innings, not a lot of action. Two and a half innings, really. He's doing it well. There's the he bunt. did it well. Over the first, but he bunts the runner over the third base. See, bunted and killed it. See, he didn't bunt it in a great place, but he and the ball went and died, so to speak. See, it didn't go all the way to what yeah, the pitcher felt comfortable just going to first. Trevor Hatton now coming to the plate. He scored a run back in the seventh. Oh, there my a goodness. Shot right to the first base. What a swing. <laughs> And that's two outs now. Now the designated hitter, number 25, Keelan Mack. Well, Keelan Mack. Tried to do way too much. All he needed to do was take a, let him throw you a strike. The infield is in. Keelan Mack got a home run the last inning. Well, it's two outs. Not Mack if he doesn't overswing. And this swung on and hit behind the grandstand. Beautiful now, I'm ball. watching my run on third base. Look where the third baseman is playing him. He's running and stopping to go back. Why would he do that? You look, look now you got to go back. See that? Swung then on you got to start again. You got to walk off the bag. And that way it allows you to go or stop. Tied at six. Mac hitting 361. And that one a little high for a he ball. He did that one right. The go ahead run at third base for the Grambling Tigers. And there's a shot down right field. Here comes a run. And Borum. That's a great two strike two out here. Those you need in order to be successful. Base hit and Keelan Mack who struggled early on in the ball game. Flied out to the center fielder then he popped out to the second baseman and struck out. Now he's produced two runs here in the last two innings. But both of those swings were within himself. Didn't over swing. And so now Grambling takes the lead which puts pressure on Jackson State coming up in the top of the ninth. Buford, 
Buford at the plate. We got to get that right. We want somebody to be happy with us. And he could be the guy right here. Outside for a ball. Again, the winner plays at noon tomorrow. That's important. Inside for a ball. I like the way Buford is standing in there. If he miss over the plate and he doesn't overswing, he can do some damage here. He looks confident in there. Outside for a ball and Buford now moving into second base. The catchers had a difficult night, but I, I suspect that Omar doesn't have anyone else. That's why he continued to go with him. You got me? Yeah, there's nobody down. Yeah, there is someone warming no, up. No, in the but I'm team. talking about the catcher. Right. Yeah, you know, because he's he struggled. And you feel sorry for the kid. He's doing the best he can. But athletic competition have no pity. Here's a shot by Buford over That's the head. Goal. That's what I said. <laughs> Buford, I call it. Yeah, he's in there for a double. And I got the name right. Keelan Buford Mack comes in to score a run. But he looks so good in that confidence. Look at that nice swing. And I call it, you could tell when a kid looks confident. And that pass ball helped the Mac to get to second, which allowed him to score. Because Mac wasn't going to score on that ball if he was on first base. And remember, this uh, it's two outs here in the inning. Yeah, doesn't matter. He doesn't run. You and I could run with him. <laughs> <laughs> Outside for a ball. But Mac, you got the two big hits tonight, my man. That's the way to do it. Okay. Now y'all got two runs to work with going into top of the ninth. Yeah. And another hit would do something here. Oh. You know, don't give up. You want to get as many runs as you can because they become important. Absolutely. And, and you know, look, the way that this game has been going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you need all the runs you can get. Every inning that Jackson has scored in, they've scored a shit that they've scored in. I mean, three, two, and they've scored one. I mean, they, they came back. Everybody's come back. So let's see what happens. Every Come inning. On, four, no, three hits, no errors committed. One stranded out there. Eight. Three six. runs. Bramble three State hits, State no State errors. One man left. Scoreless. We go to the top of the ninth. Jackson State coming to the and it's all about getting two runs to continue on for Jackson State here at the ballpark. Back after this.
A great sight just past left center field, one of the high rises, the Google building here in Atlanta, Midtown. And the Midtown sky looks extremely nice. Beautiful ballpark here in Atlanta. Rush Chandler Stadium. New pitcher in the ball game, Ethan Bates for the Grambling State University Tigers. Pitch just missing. Ethan Bates, a 4-8-1 ERA, leads the team in saves. He had four saves this year. 39 innings pitched. He's got 21 appearances. 33 strikeouts. 12 walks. He's given up 29 runs. So this is their closer. <laughs> Giving out a lot of runs. This game is not over. By a long shot. Outside for a ball. See, the one thing is you can't walk this guy. The next year that ties the game. So this is this is what happens with the bullpen. You don't know what you get him when you go there. Here's the pitch. Oh, just missing for a ball. Don't know what you're gonna get when you go in that bullpen. Ty Hill is aboard after a walk. And now the tying run at the plate. Go ahead run in the batter circle. Merceman up to bat. A walk and a double, he scored two runs today. Struck out in the last inning. I almost have the feeling the team that hits last might be the winner. Who scored, you got me? I got you. Uh, uh, nobody has shown they really want this game. Now he's throwing over. He's not burning. You need to concentrate on throw strikes to this hitter. No matter what happens to that runner, at first he can't beat you. Again, four saves for Ethan Bates this year. Why is he? Oh, I, I'm coaching. I'm sorry. <laughs> but the runner at first base can't beat you. He's irrelevant. Your concentration should be on the hitter. Well, Melton is their leading He's got 30 steals on the year. Doesn't matter. This is not a steal situation. Nobody in their right mind would try to steal when you're down by two runs in this situation. Right. In. And I know crazy things happen in amateur baseball, but it, to me. The law of probability, in other words. Yeah. Santorio, it's no way that he's going to go. It doesn't. His run is irrelevant. He needs to be on bay, and somebody hit one out. Strike, and he sits down. Merchman. Miles White now coming to the plate. Two doubles in the game. He scored two runs. This is the part of the order where Jackson has produced runs today. Four runs with these last two batters. Outside for a ball. I think he's giving that atten too much attention to that runner. You could tell him go to second, he still won't do any good. He can't, his run doesn't mean nothing. Here's a pitch. Outside for a ball. So now, Ethan behind in the count. I don't know why they were throwing the curveball there. Throw a fastball, let the guy hit a ground ball, and you can get out of the inning. Swung on and miss. Two and one the count. Ethan Bates trying to close things out and get his fifth save of the season. He want to make it interesting. He want to give Pierre some gray hair <laughs> at a young age. Say, man, this is how it is. We got to stress you out, you know. 
the young coaches to the outside. Old coaches would be angry. But you're cool over there. You're all right. Miles White ahead in the count three and one with one out. What he want to do is walk this guy, bring the winner run. <laughs> oh, go ahead. You bring the go ahead hitter. And this the is what <laughs> go ahead run now coming yeah. to the plate for Jackson State. You figure it out. Uh, this definitely would give you more gray hairs. Now Pierre goes out. Uh, <laughs> he didn't throw a fastball either the last pitch. Why? <laughs> a left hand hitter. Coach Pierre will bring the entire infield in. Talk to Ethan Bates. He didn't bring him in, they just came. He only wanted to talk to that pitcher. That's the only person he tried to talk with. And he's probably telling them something, what are you doing? Quick meeting at the mound. Well, he, that's, he, there's not a lot to say. Man, throw the ball over the plate. The two people he should have been throwing strike to. And they, they were unlikely source to hit it out. But number 15 appears to be someone that can hit the ball out. Yeah, he's got a triple and two singles today. He's actually, it's four for four, if I'm not mistaken. Five home runs on the year. Atterbury, the designated hitter. Good pitch. Jackson State knows they're down to their last two outs if they can't push two runs across. Outside for a ball. Double play will end the ball game. For Jackson, a deep base hit could tie the ball game. Here's a pitch. Missing for a ball. Two and one. Ethan. Missing for a ball. There's a replay of that. Yeah, that's a low low knee, yep. Swung on and missed for a strike. Now the count is full. Three and two with it out. This is a huge pitch for Ethan Bates. Atterbury needs a base hit or walk. Sw oh, it's a walk. And now the bases are juiced. <laughs> a Maalox moment. Uh, not for me. <laughs> no, not for, the, for you. For the coach that put him in there. You know. And he's shown they have problems throwing strikes to left-handers. So let's see what happened. He's done everything he can to help Jackson. I mean, he's walked three people. Eight to six, the score. That's in there for a strike. He's done everything to say, Jackson, here it is. I put it on the platter. Do you want it? But you got to get a hit here. Or if you don't swing, I'll walk you. 0-1 the count with one out. A base hit could tie this game, and a deep one could possibly give Jackson the lead. Here's there a shot. Is. And this is going to be into center field. Runner will tag. 
And That's now okay. Jackson pulls in within one, keeps everybody else on base. That's that run that they were worried about. He finally off the base now. So one run scores, keeps everybody at first and second. And now it is eight to seven. Omar Gomez, who had a what home run in the last inning. Base yep. hit, ties the game. Jackson, outside for a ball. He may be trying to hit a home run now. He wasn't trying the last time he hit it, but now he might try to hit it, and that's where things go haywire. Your mechanics are a little off. Here's a pitch, strike. One and one to count with one out, two outs. Guys, I'm going to take my time. I ain't got nowhere to go tonight. <laughs> you guys who've been doing full games, y'all deal with me. <laughs> I tell you what, they have really given this crowd all the money that they have paid for this game. Their money worth, huh? Their money worth. Well, just pop it up right here. Make it easy. Inside four <laughs> ball. <laughs> two and one the count with two outs. Is that that close, huh? Well, this is how, this is why I say you don't know what you're gonna get when you go to that ball in college. Yeah, he's got four saves this year. Yeah, you don't teams. know what you're gonna get. Here's a there shot. It is. Straight up in the air. He right got fielder. what he wanted. Coming up with it. And Trevor Hatton grabs the ball and Grambling comes from behind and wins the game. 8 7. And now for the Grambling Tigers, they will move on to face their rival, Go in Grambling. Southern University, tomorrow at. 6 p.m. and for Jackson State, they get Bethune Cookman one more time. And that'll be coming up tomorrow at 12 noon. So it's Southern Grambling down at the bottom and at the top part of the bra bracket, FAMU taking on Alabama State at 3 p.m. The first game of the day will be a rivalry game. Texas Southern taking on Prairie View. That is an elimination game. All right, let's. Let's take it downstairs to Charles Bishop. Well, Charles is going to get with the winning athlete here in just a second. Being visited by, we got celebrities here. <laughs> Charles Bishop will be visiting with one of the players for the Grambling State University Tiger baseball team here in just a second. But again, 9 a.m. tomorrow, Texas Southern Prairie View at 12 noon. Bethune, Cookman, and Jackson, both those are elimination games. 3 p.m. Fam, you and Alabama State, and 6 p.m. Southern and Grambling. For two robbery games, booking the game and matchups tomorrow. You got to give Jackson a lot of credit because they played with a lot of heart today. They certainly did. They never gave up, but Grambling kept coming back and they tried to give it away, but what? They could. They couldn't give it away. They tried. Let's take it down to Charles Bishop. He is with Keelan, return of the Mac. Keelan Mac, huge home run. Really got the grandma rally started. What sort of pitch did you see? Uh, he was throwing me uh, fastballs away, and then he finally missed over the plate, and I got something I can handle. Uh, when you get one in, one in the happy zone, uh, what do you do with it? Uh, you know, I just when I get in the happy zone, I just got a turn line, you know, and burn, turn and burn. Turn and burn, man. Congratulations. Great win tonight. Look forward to seeing you in the rest of the tournament. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, Keelan Mac. One of the heroes of today's ball game started out slow, was able to really take things to the next level in the last two innings of the ball game, which proved to be the difference as the Grambling Tigers win it by the score of eight to seven. Well, that'll do it for day one of the 2023 Southwestern Athletic Conference Baseball Tournament from Russ Chandler Stadium here in Atlanta. 9 a.m. tomorrow is the first game. Charles Edmond and the coach, Roger Kador, 
will give you Texas Southern and Prairie View at 9 a.m. And the other elimination game, Bethune-Cookman and Jackson at 12 noon. And then we'll be back tomorrow night. And I'll have the Florida, I'll have the South, uh, Southern and Grambling game at 6 p.m. And then, of course, a 3 p.m. game with FAMU and Alabama State. Until next time, for everybody associated with the SWAC Digital Broadcast, always remember, one nation, one people. Peace.